Thank you very much, Granata, for telling us about the other ways we might do it. So we've heard of why we should screen for atrial fibrillation. We've heard of why we should screen for hypertension and atrial fibrillation and both together. And now slightly more clever ways about how we might select those who will have a higher risk of having atrial fibrillation. And my talk is a brief one to tell you about something that's a bit new and that's using the pulse wave waveform, a new footprint for atrial fibrillation. As far as checking for blood pressure elevation and measuring the blood pressure, the most common type that's used around the world is something that uses oscillometry. It's a cuff, it goes around, you don't use a correct cough sound, you don't use a stethoscope. And this is used everywhere in the world to diagnose and manage hypertension. It can be used both in the office and the home, and it can be used for AF detection. And that's what I'd like to speak to you about. Here we see a cuff, and here we see an oscillometric waveform on the right-hand side. This is from a study reported in 2022, Kumar et al. in Biomedical Engineering Advances. But you can see that what is done here when looking for atrial fibrillation is just using the peak-to-peak -peak variation. Here you can see, just looking at the peaks of those pulse waveforms, that's called pulse wave difference, the sort of peak-to-peak -peak interval. This variability and irregularity is what is used in most algorithms to detect atrial fibrillation. But all of these use regularity or irregularity alone as the sole measure. Now, if I can just give you an analogy, here's an ECG. Let's just do the peak to peak variability. And you can see then, we can see if it's irregular or not. But do you think this is clever? Do you want to throw away the P waves? Do you want to throw away the QRS morphology? Do you want to throw away the T waves as a way of diagnosing atrial fibrillation? It doesn't make sense. So in the same way, in oscillometry, there is a lot more information. If we look a bit more closely, a lot more information in the pulse waveform. And we can use artificial intelligence and machine learning to diagnose rhythm using not just the irregularity index, but all things that the waveform tells us. And many that we don't actually understand because the machine learning just looks at it and we don't actually know how it picks it. This paper was published very recently online in Heart Rhythm by Janik et al. And it looked at the diagnostic accuracy of detecting atrial fibrillation using a novel machine learning algorithm of a blood pressure monitor. And this monitor used AF detection in an Omron device that's just released at this meeting which uses artificial intelligence and machine learning and many features in the waveform that we don't all know about. But in 267 subjects with atrial fibrillation and 292 without AF, it had a sensitivity of 95% and you can see the confidence intervals, 92 to 97% and a specificity of 98.6%, 97 to 100. So it had a higher sensitivity and a similar a specificity to the MicroLife Watch BP that was used in the same study. But it will need further validation in a broader range of subjects to see how well this artificial intelligence performs. So the ECG we know is still required for AF diagnosis, either through pulse PPG or BP oscillometry, it's not quite sufficient to make a confident diagnosis. And this is true in the guidelines 
of the ESC 2020 and 2024, the Asian Pacific Heart Rhythm Guidance in 2021, and the American Heart Association American College Guideline in 2023, all require an ECG to be read by a health professional with expertise in ECG rhythm interpretation. So my conclusions and the conclusions of my colleagues that screening for diagnosis and detection of AF and hypertension, no question about the need for BP screening and control. No question there's a bad combination if we have it with atrial fibrillation and hypertension. <clears throat> Single time screening will de define people with atrial fibrillation at high stroke risk. Very similar, no different to people with clinically diagnosed atrial fibrillation. And for that reason, we should look for both. We can screen for AF, it can be done simultaneously. We've heard from Alta Scuda that this is a no brainer. I completely agree. We can do it smarter. We've heard from Renate Schnabel that it is possible to make a higher risk group if we can do that. But we can use consumer health professional blood pressure devices, BP monitors with the AI inbuilt, and using more clever ways of looking at the pulse waveform to make a more accurate diagnosis to improve the performance. ECG will still be needed for the AF diagnosis and that can be done with a 30 second handheld rhythm strip or a 12 lead ECG and someone who knows how to read ECGs. But I put it to you that we've got the evidence, we know they're bad together, we know it's easy to do, let's get ahead and do it. Time to act now. Thank you very much ladies and gentlemen.